These next two shots are each of grapes in the same winery, but notice the drastic difference between the two. Over the first one, I'll press Shift F to load it into the viewer, then place the playhead over the second one. The waveforms in these two shots are not extremely different. The second shot doesn't have as much dynamic range, doesn't have as much shadow or highlight, and this first shot has a lot of reds down in the blacks, but they're both fairly evenly balanced. So what's going on here is not a color cast in particular, but actually a difference in saturation. One way to see that is to switch to the vector scope. We can see right away that this image is much more saturated because the traces extend out further from the center of the vector scope. This is great to be able to see the difference. We can especially see saturation in the blue, but it doesn't necessarily help us adjust it. There's another tool that we can use to see saturation. I'm going to go back to the waveform for both images, and then under the channels option for the waveform, I'm going to select chroma. Chroma, or color, is a measure of saturation. And here too we can see quite a bit of difference where we have a broader distribution of saturation in the left-hand image. So what I'll do is go to the saturation pane and increase the overall saturation to make these two trace patterns match each other better. Now let's go back and look at the luminance information. The left-hand image has a broader dynamic range, so let's go into Exposure and bring down the shadows and bring up the highlights a little bit so they're closer. I might also bring down the midtones just a bit. Now let's toggle that off and on. So here we have a situation where the color balance matched well between the shots already, but there was a big difference in saturation and a difference in contrast.